what is up everybody star wars dad back for another video today we're um gonna be doing another segment on some some new decks um today's segment is called old dogs new tricks um so we're gonna be looking at five decks from the first set with some upgrades um so this is a deck that i just did a video on but i did want to talk about it a little bit because the list was kind of all over the place in the video but this is kind of where i ended up and i feel very very good about it and the you know the biggest i mean the biggest thing i have to say so far from testing is that timely intervention is an absolutely awesome card and it really can it changes the way that you think about how you're building your decks when you're playing green and so for darth vader what this does for me is it allows me in addition to my removal like force choke and open fire and overwhelming barrage it allows me to use timely intervention at any time as a piece of removal and this allows me to not only like benefit more from super laser tech it makes me feel more comfortable with the 25 hp base because i have even more removal and it's cheap and sometimes i can keep those units on board that i use for removal afterwards it also allows me to ambush in reinforcement walker to gain six life it also allows me to ambush in ruck which is one of the main things i wanted to talk about with this list right here is that uh ruck i think is going to be very very important in in these types of decks um because otherwise like what is our answer for things like crate dragon ruck is our answer so the fact that we have timely intervention and we can smuggle it at any time and do it for seven resources out of nowhere to kill that great dragon later in the game is very very important and the fact that we can shield ruck first and we had to decide when we want to shield ruck which is awesome but the fact that we can shield it first so that it survives after killing the great dragon is awesome and then ruck also is very good against things like poe and wrecker Darth Maul, you know, Zuckus, everything big that we have to deal with in this format, uh, Ruck becomes a way to kill things and stay alive on board. So I think Ruck is going to be very, very good in this next set in green decks that play Timely Intervention. But Timely Intervention really does make me feel more comfortable about playing the 25 HP base because I feel like I have a lot more ways of dealing with things. Like... I just don't, I'm not as worried about my life total when I can just kill things out of nowhere constantly. <clears throat> um, you know, in this list, you know, the other big thing, if you didn't get a chance to watch the video that I just posted, is the three recruit, which I think is very, very important in a deck like this to find specific tools, to find um, whether we need a life gain, we need some ramp with laser tech whether we need removal with Imperial Interceptor or Palpatine, or whether we need Vader to look for Sentinels or to help close the game out, or Reinforcement Walker because we we're trying to close the game out or gain life, or Crate Dragon because we're trying to close the game out, or Ruck because we need to kill a Crate Dragon. Um, it, just, it just feels like a very, very important card. I always played two in my other list from set one, but I think even more so because of how we are looking for different resources and I've kind of explained recruit in the last video with Darth Vader but you know as the game goes on let's say by like turn six you've you've had five draws now you've drawn 10 cards you're 16 cards through your deck so you have about 35 34 cards left in your deck at that point so every time you're using recruit from there on out you're really increasing your chances of finding what you're looking for so it just becomes very very important um, but this list feels really good. Then the biggest change is there's no Ruthless Raider in the sideboard. I think you could still play it if you wanted to, um, but I feel like Relentless is just going to be super important. Playing against control decks has gotten worse because of how much more removal they have. They have Fell the Dragon, Rivals Fall, um, and the Calculated one, I can't remember, some Calculated Liability or something like that. Um, but the removal just has gotten even more rampant. So Relentless is just going to be very important um, for beating control. And that's another reason why we're playing the TIE Fighter, is just to have as much early pressure as we can, um, especially because we don't play like Viper Pro Droid and Season Short Trooper in this particular list. Um, <clears throat> I think considering another cheap unit 
and in the sideboard to bring in against control and like taking out like a you know pieces of removal like force choke or things like that that are not or open fire that are not going to be as effective against control or even price on your head is not going to be as effective like in bringing in like another cheap unit might be a good idea i'm not even sure if you need the ularin anymore for aggro because of timely intervention so that's something to play test more but I do think control matchup has gotten harder, but this is where I'm at with this list. It feels very, very good. Um, definitely give it a shot. Let me know what you guys think if you are a Darth Vader green player. Um, the next list, ooh, Palp Yellow. Okay, this one's sweet. Um, I tested this one out some today, and so the first things that I want to say about this list are, you know, we added in a couple price on your head for additional ramp. Um, the Salacious Crumb is really cool synergy because we can heal with it. It heals even more so with Yularen, so you get to heal two if you have a Yularen in play. Uh, and then just the synergy of like damaging units whenever we want, so we can kind of like snipe at any time in the game a unit that we want to steal with Palpatine. Um, and this also is playing the Timely Intervention Ruck. Again, that's for the Crate Dragons and the big units that we might have to deal with. Change of Heart also does a very good job of that. But it's just, it kind of gives us different options. Like, we don't want to just rely on change of heart. Also, change of heart's a little more expensive. So just being able to get a ruck on board and use it as a unit to kill big threats is extremely important. Um, another big change was bringing in the Star Sunfighter as a, an early Sentinel to go with our late Sentinel of Devastator. Um, I kind of just sticking with Sentinels in space, we're using Barrage and Timely Intervention to take things out. Um, no Good to Me Deads to slow us down. Um, no Consortium in this particular list, again, because of Timely Intervention. Um, we still have the three Reinforcement Walker to gain life, and since we play the additional piece of ramp, it helps us to get there quicker. A couple of Phase Dark Trooper takes the place of Cell Block Guard here. And I think that's about the biggest change is I did put a couple of Darth Maul on the sideboard for matchups where we want to overwhelm our opponents versus try to find cheap units with Darth Vader. Or maybe even matchups where Devastator is not really needed, like super aggro. Um, this list feels very, very good against aggro. Again, we're gaining life with Yularen. We have Sentinels. We have Sentinels in space, Sentinels on the ground. We have Barrage. We, you know, again, just timely intervention, man. It really does change the way that I look at a deck. Like, as I feel more confident about my ability to deal with threats, I don't feel like I just have to find barrage and I'll win this one, or I just have to find a sentinel. I feel like I have more options. And then, obviously, traders and change of heart are very, very good too. The additional ramp helps us to get there quicker. Um, and I just play two change of heart in the main, one on the side. Um, I, and again, I just wanted to find a place for Ruck to be in there regularly because I think Ruck is also relevant against decks that are playing like Poe into Wrecker. And, you know, it just it gets down early. It gets down on the same turn as Poe. And that's important because if Poe gets down and we don't have an answer, Poe can do 8 damage to our face and that might just be too much. So we um, gotta got to be able to deal with those things. And there's an argument that you might even want the third ruck, but I, I stuck with two just because we're playing the traders and the change of heart, and those are answers for aggro, as well as the sentinels that we have. Um, sneak attack is a lot of fun in this deck. This deck is very, very good. Uh, if you haven't tried this deck out, it it does a very good job of annoying your opponent, and it, once you get to six resources with change of heart, and barrage, and things like that, like you're you're pretty golden, and then you're, you know, you're going into Darth Vader, Reinforcement Walker. So, it, you know, Devastator is not always needed, but it's nice to sneak attack things in, too, out of nowhere, which is sweet. Uh, a couple of Shoot First is a little different, um, just because it is a way to, you know, kill more things um, to benefit from price in your head, or another way to trigger price in your head, and then to not take damage on our Sentinels, which is what we're most likely be going to be using with Shoot First early in the game. Uh, in the sideboard, a couple of Emperor's Legion for control. 
a couple of evacuate if things get out of hand, a couple of relentless for control, change of heart's going to be good against control too, and devastators for control as well. <clears throat> aggro, I, f I feel like I have a good grasp on the aggro matchup at this point. I know a lot of people say that, that that's the matchup that they can't win. I think you just have to test it out a bunch once you get a feel for it. I think a lot of your, your sentinels really help. Um, now, again, that's I haven't thoroughly tested this against the new aggro decks, which I'm about to discuss with the Poe and Wreckers. So we'll see if there's any changes I need to make. But I do think Ruck is a good answer to deal with those. All right, the new Sabine Yellow. <clears throat> so this list is very streamlined. I think the biggest change is there's no four cause I believe in. And I think it just didn't feel right. There was 15 cards that were non-hero aspect, so it just didn't make sense to have it in here. But we do have Daring Raid as a subtle replacement that can ping for damage. We have Reckless Gunslinger that pings for damage. I really like Reckless Gunslinger because of his ability to smuggle. Um, this deck is very low to the ground. We have Greedo, Reckless Gunslinger, and Cartel Turncoat on turn one. We could, and Leia, we could play um, any one of those plus Leia on turn one, which is sweet. So a lot of really, really early pressure. Um, three Heroic Sacrifice is just very, very good with both K2SO, Poe Dameron, and Wrecker. I mean, K2SO, you're doing, what, nine? Poe Dameron, you're doing ten. Wrecker, you're doing nine damage. So it's just a very, very strong card to finish the game off. Same with Surprise Strike with those cards. Uh, it's going to be 7, 11, and 10 damage that you're getting out of those cards. So just just a lot of ways to push damage in this deck. It's super low to the ground, super aggressive. Uh, Ketsuanya is really good for removing upgrades. Same with Poe. Um, we, we have three Disabling Fang Fighters, another way to remove upgrades. Um, then we have the three Spark Rebellion in the side for the control matchups. Two Wolf is in there for this control matchups, and Two Shoot First is a card that I think is going to be relevant because there's going to be a lot of matches where we're, it's, it's Poe versus Poe and Wrecker versus Wrecker. So Shoot First is going to be very relevant so that we can keep ours alive and only pay one resource to kill theirs. So I think you know you got to use the cards that are really really good and and, um, and expect to be playing a lot of of Poe versus Poe and Wrecker versus Wrecker type matchups. So. That's my thoughts on Sabine Yellow. Of course, the three sneak attack is very, very awesome for Poe and Wrecker as well. Um, you can sneak attack Poe in for four resources and then heroic sacrifice it. So you can just kind of come in out of nowhere and do 10 damage, and that's just absolutely amazing. Obviously, sneak attack in K2SO is still good too for the ability to get in for seven damage. So this is very similar to the Fennec Red list. The difference is we're not able to ambush things in and we're a little bit lower to the ground because um, we're not trying to do what we were doing with Fennec Red. So we're, we're more aggressive in this particular version. But you know, if you're a Sabine Yellow player, definitely let me know what you've come up with in testing and what you've tried out. Um, but this feels like a very good starting point and I, I do love this deck, it's such a fun deck. Especially because we get to play Poe and Wrecker and Sneak Attack and Heroic Sacrifice. So, um, uh, one more thing about Reckless Gunslinger. I, that card has really, really outshined what I was expecting from it. The ability to smuggle it out of nowhere, ping your opponent, and just keep pressure on the board for just three resources later in the game is so good. It is very good. Because it, it does not cost a lot. And we also are doing the same thing with Koss... Cassian and Andor, we're just coming out of nowhere smuggling it, and then it's immediately readied. So there's a lot of like cards like that, that Cassian, Millennium Falcon, Reckless Gunslinger, they're just coming out of nowhere and doing damage. And that's like the whole theme of this deck, right? Like with Sneak Attack and Heroic Sacrifice and those cards. <clears throat> so, super fun deck. Alright, and the next list is the updated Sabine Green. So again, this one is a lot of fun, has similar themes to the yellow. The difference, of course, is going to be the ECL Timely Intervention. Um, so I think Timely Intervention's value in here is a little different than like a Vader, of course, because in Sabine we're mostly playing offense, but I think there is, because we're going to be seeing a lot of the same cards, like the Pose and the Wreckers, being able to like timely intervention out of nowhere for a Poe and a Wrecker 
or even a K2SO because it has overwhelm can be super impactful in swinging the momentum of the game. Um, I do have three Daring Raid in the sideboard. I think those two cards, you know, the Timely Intervention, the Daring Raids are going to be cards that you switch out for specific matchups. I think Daring Raid is going to be more important for, like, control to get in for more damage. Um, things that stand out about this list otherwise, there is still four cause of believing in this list. We were able to get 44 heroic cards in here. The only cards that are not are the Timely Intervention and the Reckless Gunslinger. Um, Rebel Astol, we still play two that is still relevant, but there is not as many Rebel units because of the Ketsu Anyo and the Poe and the Wrecker. But just about everything else is a Rebel still, and the Reckless Gunslinger is not. So Rebel Assault is still decent. Heroic Sacrifice, I'm playing three of, again, because it's just so good with K2SO, Poe, and Wrecker to push that damage to close out the game. Um, and Ketsu Anyo, of course, and Poe are going to do the same things as Sabine Yellow and kill upgrades. Same sideboard with the disabling Fang Fighter with three, two Wolf. Uh, the difference in this sideboard, of course, is a couple of U-Wing for those control matchups. Um, it's hard to say which one of the Sabines is which one I would prefer at this point. They're so similar. I think they both have their strengths. Um, I, I, I mean, I like Timely so much that it makes me like this deck just about the same as Sabine Yellow. Because... Timely is just such a good card, and it allows you to, you know, out of nowhere, change the momentum of the game. So, I think they're both very similar. It's, I really, it's hard to say. I think it's apples and oranges. Like, they both feel very strong and very fast. And I think you're going to be seeing a lot of these decks. This is, a, you know, of course, a very good starting point. By no means is this the final list. I think the sideboard is the area that's going to be tweaked. Um, I'm not sure if Echo Base Defender needs to be in here, but I like it because against those aggro mirrors, it does um, provide me with a little bit of defense, which I think will be important. Same thing with Timely. So, kind of my thinking. Not a lot to say about this otherwise. It's just, it's you know, again, give it a shot. Let me know what Sabine Green you're playing, how you would play Sabine Green. Um, cards that maybe I hadn't think about or didn't have in here. Uh, I didn't put the Night Skirmisher in here just because it's not a rebel. And But, I mean, <clears throat> you know, that could be a, a good substitute for Echo Base. They both have four power and three defense. But I, th I felt like Sentinel was a little more valuable. The other reason it's valuable is against, like, Boba Fett, because Boba Fett does not have Saboteur, so... Having that that Sentinel in there can, when you're racing Boba Fett, can be the difference maker in swinging the damage. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, not a lot to say. This deck is pretty self-explanatory. Everybody knows what this deck does at this point. But this is a good starting point. And the final deck, the updated Boba Green list. Um, so some things, some new tricks for this deck, I would say, again, Timely Intervention. Again, that just works so well with Boba Fett and its ability to pump up your resources. So, you know, just for one resource, you can Timely, and you can use that for anything in the deck, which just means you basically are ambushing in all the time in this deck um, because of Cloud Rider, uh, because of for LOM, because of Zuckus, because of Maul, you know, you already have so much ambush. I did take out Bosk for this particular version. I just felt like the four LOM Zuckus combo was just better and just more powerful. And being able to ambush in a turn earlier with four LOM is just feels very, very good. And then to follow it up with Zuckus, I did also take out Steadfast Battalion because Zuckus is a 6-6 six, six that I can ambush in at any time and I don't need my leader to be out and it becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven with 4 LOM. Now it doesn't have Overwhelm like Steadfast, so, but I think I think it's worth it for the consistency that it provides of being stronger already as a 6-6. Six, six. Um, you know, the other cool cards are the McClunky. Um, McClunky allows us to do some cool tricks. Um, we can play Greedo, play McClunky, and then play Greedo again on turn one. 
which is really, really sweet. We can use McClunky to put a Fetz Fire Spray um, back into our hand and play it again after we've already attacked with it in one in a turn, so we can swing in for 10 damage. Um, Fugitive Wookie feels like the better choice to Dr. Evazan because we don't, you know, especially because it's only two resources, so if, if it if it dies and our opponent gets to exhaust a unit, that's not necessarily like the worst thing ever. Whereas Dr. Evazan can be really devastating. It's still kind of debatable, but Dr. Evazan is so love or hate that I just, I felt like the Wookiee was the card that was less devastating, but still a 3-3. Um, of course, the Bubba Fett's armor is incredible on the Disintegrator and on the leader unit. We're still playing the 3 Consortium as early life gain to help us in those aggro mirrors, which is probably what a lot of the meta is going to be early on as it gets established. We're going to be seeing a lot of Poe and Wrecker, so having that subtle life gain early can really swing the, us uh, the race in our advantage. Still playing a couple of Seventh Fleet Defenders. And then, of course, the three, uh, the four LOM Zuckus combo, which is just very, very good at removing threats. And, you know, for board control and kind of taking over. And four LOM is also a very, very overwhelming barrage. Good, bar um, <laughs> good lord. A very, very good overwhelming barrage target to do six damage the following turn. So that's another reason why that card's very good. And then, of course, the three Darth Maul to close out the game with the Ambush Overwhelm, which, you know, does the same thing as Steadfast in that regard. But it does it all the time. So I just feel like Zuckus with four LOM is just a stronger combo. In the sideboard, we're playing a couple of Imperials, Emperor's Legion for the control matchups, a couple of No Good to Me Dead for... Um, decks with big units and leaders that we want to exhaust. One resupply because of the three price on your head that we were playing in this list, which uh, we can ramp <coughs> ramp into the Boba Fett leader on turn two, of course, because we play price on your head on turn one. Turn two, we ambush in Super Laser Tech to kill a thing with two or less HP that we put the price in your head on, and then we get to pump up two resources and play the Boba Fett leader, which is absolutely insane. So this deck definitely got even better than it already was. Uh, a couple of Wele, just because like, I just feel wrong not playing Wele in this deck, and just feel like it's useful against certain matchups and big units. And then a couple of Ruck, as I've talked about throughout this video, and the how beneficial it is with ECL and Timely. Because we have so many good things already in the deck, it didn't make the main board. But I think against any deck that has big, big units that we want to take out, or Crate Dragon, Ruck is coming in for sure. And then one Evacuate just as a niche play. <clears throat> but that is those five decks. I think these are all just good starting points. But I hope you guys enjoy the video, and let me know how you would play these decks, or what your thoughts are or any cars that I might have missed as I was building these. But as always, y'all have a good one and